Hey guys, today we're gonna cover the add cube and other meshes tool. Quick reminder, this lesson is from our complete intro to Blender course that we're offering for free for a limited time on YouTube. If you're new here, I'd recommend starting at the beginning of the course. I've added a link in the description. All right, go ahead and open up Blender and let's jump right in. To begin this lesson, let's start a new file. So go up to your file menu and pick the option for new, general, and there's no need to save the file you've been working on. In the new file, you'll start with the default cube. And we want to start talking about the tools that we have access to in edit mode. So to see those tools, press the tab key to switch to edit mode. And you'll notice a whole slew of tools show up on the left hand side. Now, while you can hover over these tools and the little description of what each is will pop up, it can be far easier to know what you're dealing with if you do this. Try hovering over the side of the tools, any of these tools, where your little cursor becomes an arrow pointing in both directions. Click and hold down and drag it out and keep dragging to the right until you see the names of the tools appear next to the tool icons and let go. Now it'll be far easier for you to tell what each of these tools is called. You can at any time hover over the outside edge of the tool icon area and click and drag it back to the left if you want to make them icons again. But in this case, I'll drag it back to the right so that we can more clearly see which tools we're working with. And I want to talk about the first tool in what I would call the 3D modeling tools here. So those are these new tools that show up in edit mode and we're specifically going to cover them over the next few lessons to talk about how to go beyond the meshes that we add and use these 3D modeling tools to create additional shapes in the geometry we have here. Now, in this lesson, let's talk about the Add Cube tool. Let's go ahead and click once on it to switch to the Add Cube tool. And you'll notice with the Add Cube tool that if you hover over the surface here or uh, the flat ground plane, you'll have a cursor that has a little bit of a mesh grid type thing going on and it's parallel to that surface or laying down on that surface. If you put it up on the side of this face, it flip flops around to match up to whichever face you're on. So try this, just in regular space on the ground plane, click and hold down and drag your cursor to a certain place and then let go, then move your cursor up and then click again. So the first click and drag and let go was to define how wide and deep this would be. And then when you move your cursor up, that's for the depth or the height of that third dimension of that cube. Try it on the top of the cube that you already have. Click, hold down, drag, then let go, and then move your mouse up and then click and let go. And you'll draw a cube right on top. Hey everyone, we're doing something a little unconventional here, and for a limited time, we're giving you access to one of our paid courses for free right here on YouTube, and this lesson is a part of it. Blender is a beast of a program to learn, but with the right approach, it doesn't have to be. That's why we created Blender Academy, to help people build the Blender skills they need and then go out and get the jobs they want. We hope you find these lessons to be a good investment of your time. If you do, and you're serious about learning Blender, head over to our website and continue learning with us. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And now, back to the lesson. So, in one respect, this isn't any different than the add mesh that we've been doing all along. You could use your add mesh command to drop a cube in here. But there's a few subtle differences. One, whenever you add a mesh, it's always going to add it where the 3D cursor is. So, no matter what, you're going to add it there, and then it's going to be added at a particular shape or size, the kind of the default shape or size. So you're always going to need to then move it somewhere and manipulate it further. Whereas the add cube tool is giving you the option to start out wherever it is you want. And it's especially handy for attaching it to existing geometry. And you can already start getting it roughly the size that you want. So if you need a smaller cube and you want it to be on top here, you notice we could do that far more easily with the add cube tool than if we had added a mesh cube and then had to move it and scale it. Notice too, whenever you have just finished using the add cube tool, you still have that adjust last operation panel. You can click it to open it up 
and play around with it. It shows what the location, rotation, and size is. You could go ahead and click and drag on the size and play around with changing that and play around with the other options as well. I'll go ahead and click on add cube, the panel name here to get that to collapse down. And if you notice, whenever a tool has a little tiny arrow to the bottom right of it, that means that if you click and hold down, you'll see that it will reveal additional tools. So here, as I'm clicking and holding down and moving my mouse, I can cycle through this menu. So I'll stop on add cone and let go of my mouse button. So now it switches to the add cone tool. So try that, go to the add cone tool and then hover over the side here, click, hold down and drag and then let go of your mouse button and then move your mouse out and click another time and you've added a cone to the outside there of that shape. So go ahead and experiment with this. Go back over to where it says add cone now, click and hold down, drag your cursor down to add cylinder and let go. Now you're in the add cylinder tool and try adding the cylinder to another face. So orbit around by holding that center mouse wheel click and hold down and drag across this face and then let go and then move your mouse out and click and let go and you've added a cylinder. So just a fast way to add more geometry in edit mode. I prefer using this add cube or it's the add tool in general in this fashion rather than adding a mesh when I'm in edit mode. And this is where I think of adding these shapes so that I can continue to manipulate and modify what I have here until I get the kind of shape I want. Now, of course, all of these shapes still have vertices, edges, and faces, which can be manipulated. You're in edit mode, so you can select different elements and then change and transform what they look like. You can delete them. All the things that we've learned from previous lessons apply to this geometry too. One thing, in case you're curious, let's say for that cube that you added up top and you have this cube here, you might wonder, where these two cubes are stacked on top of each other, if you could see through here, and you can actually, let's go ahead and learn about that right now. Just to the left of the wireframe option, there's this icon here for toggle X-ray. You'll notice the shortcut is Alt-Z. You see that if I hover over this, the bottom of that little description says shortcut Alt-Z. So you can use that shortcut, hold down Alt and press Z, and it'll toggle to X-ray view mode. And then what I'm talking about is this face here that would be the bottom face of the small cube. You might wonder, depending on what other 3D applications you've used before, whether that face is there or is it missing and it's actually hollow. And what happens is this face is not cutting into the larger face in any way. So it didn't create a hole in that larger face. It also didn't subdivide it. So if we select this larger face, the whole face will be selected. It's not like these edges have somehow subdivided or bisected in any way this face. So just something to note, if that doesn't make any sense to you, don't worry about it. That's more for folks who are coming from certain 3D software. They might wonder what's happening on the inside of these shapes. And really it's just one shape is completely overlapping another. They just so happen to be touching at this face. And we'll talk about those types of intersections in a future lesson. For now, we can toggle that X-ray mode back off again by holding down Alt and pressing Z on our keyboard. And that will toggle that back off. Of course, you could just click on this icon here and then click on it again to toggle it on and off. Note too that whatever the last tool you use, your Add Cube tool is now defaulting to whatever that last one you tried is. So for me, it's defaulting to Add Cylinder. So if in a future lesson you're thinking, oh yeah, where's that add cube tool and you can't find it anywhere, it might be because you have it on something else. So you can click and hold down and drag back to add cube and let go. And now it would be defaulting back to the add cube tool. So right now we're not gonna worry about trying to build anything particular using this tool. Just helpful to know how it works. And in future lessons, we'll take advantage of it when we're building more recognizable shapes. But Go ahead and practice. Try each of the things that you can add, both on the ground and relative to other shapes. And then when you're all done with that, you're ready to move on to the next lesson. Congratulations, you made it through the lesson. Did you find this video to be helpful? 
let us know by giving it a like. If you're ready for the next lesson, you can find it in this playlist. And if you're interested in learning more about how we can help you build the skills you need, head over to blenderacademy.com. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and until next time, happy blending! Thank <laughs> you.